Is Adobe Premiere dead? Now, before you rage comment down below, hear me out, because by the end of this video, you may just agree with me. Hey guys, I'm Raphael, and welcome to the channel where our goal is to always fix it in camera and then finesse it in post. And I always appreciate the early thumbs up because honestly, Adobe Premiere is a great program, but I believe its days are numbered. And it all comes down to how Adobe set up their system. Let's all recall that Premiere Pro didn't really start to gain any traction until Apple switched from Final Cut 7 to Final Cut 10 in 2011. And many people switched over at that time to Premiere to what essentially became Final Cut 8. And Premiere has had a great 10 year run eating into the market share of most NLEs. And to better understand what may happen with Premiere, we first need to discuss how Photoshop came into its prominence as the world leader in photo editing, because it may be the very same reason Premiere will die a slow death. Photoshop in the late 90s and early 2000s was the most recognizable name in photo editing, but it wasn't the industry standard yet. It had stiff competition from Corel Draw and Corel Paint Pro. At the time, I recall that many people were able to get their hands on educational versions of Photoshop, pirated versions, and they were using it for free to learn photo editing. And as Photoshop was gaining steam and popularity, the amount of people that grew up using the software for free was also rising. And when these two waves met, the people that were starting their own design studios or agencies were hiring people that knew how to use Photoshop and not having to train them to use the software meant that they were able to jump on projects right away. And Adobe didn't try too hard to prevent people from using the software. They only pursued studios that were trying to use it for free. How many of you used an educational version of Photoshop growing up? And how many of you landed a job because you knew how to use those Adobe products? So remember this free aspect that propelled Photoshop's growth? It'll be really important later in this video. In the 2000s, for editing software, Avid Systems was the industry standard and really expensive. And Final Cut was that mid-tier NLE that was a great affordable program in comparison. Premiere Pro in its current version was launched in 2003 and it wasn't even on the top three behind Media 100 and Sony Vegas and a few others. The user base was already huge for the Adobe products, Photoshop, Illustrator, and After Effects. So much so that it was hard for Adobe to slow down the cracked versions. And when they switched to a subscription model, many longtime users bought in for the first time paying month to month. And everything else at the time was either too expensive or subpar to anything that Adobe was able to offer as a full suite. Photoshop is still considered a top application to photo editing, but there are free or near free applications that are nipping at the heels for sure. But I would say that Photoshop is still the most powerful and most used in the industry. However, the same cannot be said for Premiere Pro. As robust as Premiere is, and all the features it has, it does have some serious competition that I would say offer better features that are more desirable within the industry as a whole. And they are all for free. If I was getting started today and I wanted to learn a non-linear editing software, something that has the same features that pros have access to and no upfront cost and can work on the computer that I have right now, a Mac, PC, or even Linux, the app I would go for is DaVinci Resolve. It is the exact same software used by industry pros to produce some of the best content in the world. There is no subscription, and if you buy any hardware from Blackmagic Design, they offer the full studio version for free, which only offers a few more high-end features that typical users won't ever need. Blackmagic's Resolve started out as a color grading software only, and over the last decade has turned into a full featured NLE and complete suite to not only rival, but outpace the development of Premiere Pro. If features are looked at side by side, DaVinci outperforms almost in every category, and it's free. Resolve is a non-linear editor that takes the best aspects of Avid, Premiere, and Final Cut. It's already the industry standard for color grading. It can do motion graphics and VFX right inside the app with the Fusion tab. It has a pro audio mixing suite built right in with Fairlight and can output any format you can imagine. Also, did I mention it was free? Let's say you wanna do the same thing in Premiere, fine tuning the audio in Audition or build more complex title animations or do VFX in After Effects. Oops, you have to sign up for the full suite. Now you're at $600 a year, every year. I personally do a lot of work in After Effects, almost every single day. I have been paying for Adobe products since the mid 2000s and I have been on the subscription since 2013. So to date, the subscription alone has cost me over $4,200 and will continue to cost me $600 a year until they either lower or raise their prices. 
And if you live and breathe in After Effects, Fusion is still a hard sell to switch over. After Effects is the industry standard for motion graphics, though Calvary is coming up the ranks to eat After Effects' lunch. But we're not here to talk about After Effects. The speed at which the developers at Blackmagic incorporate new features is blistering. And in the last 10 years, they have been able to elevate Resolve to one of the best overall packages for content creation. And they take the best features in all the NLEs and find a way to incorporate them into Resolve. You can easily start on the cut page to make your first edit and skip over all the other tabs right to the export and just learn the editing fundamentals. But when you're ready, you can go to the edit tab and have access to more advanced functions. Then to the color tab to grade your footage, then to mix your audio, then add motion graphics and skill stack as you go. But the application remains the same. Resolve is also written in modern day programming language to be optimized for today's machines. Premiere Pro is still living on its original code that was written over 20 years ago. That is why it feels slow and laggy. And it's a bloated app that's been brute forced to work on today's machines. Adobe is just beginning to adapt to the modern software with Adobe Rush, which I believe will eventually replace the current Premiere Pro, but that's years out. And currently it's an iMovie competitor and you still have to pay a month subscription just to use it. Adobe's big struggle is that they are a software first company and Blackmagic Design is a hardware first company. They make and sell all the components to build out a full production facility with optimized hardware and software, very similar to Apple. And unlike Premiere, Resolve isn't tied to a graphics card like Nvidia or AMD. They try to maximize all the graphics cards as soon as possible, which means they can run on almost any system. The benefit to knowing Resolve is that any aspect of production can be done in this application. And Future Studios will be created around a free collaborative workflow. It will be really hard for Adobe to compete with such a powerful competitor who is just giving it away. And they match their features one for one. Currently, there are many options for entry-level editing, but they all have a pay-for-play model as software only. Resolve has all the features and with every release, they add even more. So in five years, it will be hard to beat it in any aspect. Both Adobe and Apple will eventually need to provide a similar offer. Just like HTML5 came along and killed Flash, I feel Resolve will do the same to Premiere unless Adobe can continue to attract paid customers with amazing new features. Listen, I'm not sponsored by any of these brands, but I have used them extensively in professional and personal work, and I've cut through the marketing BS and promises and found the brass tacks with these NLEs. I love After Effects and I love Photoshop. There are cheaper alternatives, but these are simply the best for me. But for editing, if you want to future-proof your work and your potential, Resolve, in my opinion, is the very best option and it's only going to get better the more people start using it. And that is the strength of free that Blackmagic has leveraged in the same way that Photoshop was in so many hands at the right time. But Blackmagic is doing it with purpose. What are your thoughts on the future of Premiere Pro? Do you feel Adobe will do anything to keep Resolve at bay? Or is Premiere Pro dead and they just don't know yet? As always, thanks for watching. Give me a big thumbs up, subscribe. I'm Raphael, I'll talk to you soon, bye for now.